Hello, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to discuss a very s simple paper, but which dwells into physiology quite a lot. It helps you to understand how FSH works on the follicles. And a simple question which we need to ask is, is there any role of increasing the FSH in poor responders? Or are we just wasting money? So this was a study done, published in Human Reproduction 2017. And what it looked at, it looked at the ovarian response to controlled ovarian stimulation and what does FSH say? The question is, do FSH levels on a day of trigger differ between normal, poor and hyper responders? Does increasing the dose in poor responders change the outcome? And does increasing the FSH dose also give better quality oocytes? What we do know is that when you give FSH, it extends the FSH window. So you're, you're pushing the recruitment of follicles over a much longer time. Again, remember that every woman reacts differently to the hormones. Don't blame the, wo the woman, blame the hormones. That's what I've always said. There is variation between in poor responders and hyper responders. And let's look at what the FSH levels say. And this was a study done, it's published in the Cetra trial. Less than 39 years, BMI less than 32, no more than two failed cycles, regular cycles, normal of 94 cases, poor of 16, and hyper responder 17. Blood test on day two and day of HCG trigger, a fixed dose, very important, fixed dose of FSH of 150 from day two onwards in the evening, and antagonist randomized from day two. So either you start antagonist in day two or start antagonist on day six. And what did it show? They, it showed that the FSH levels on day two was lower for hyper responders, compared them to normal and poor responders. Also, what it told us very important is that the mean rise of FSH from day two to day to trigger in a poor responder was much smaller, which means that the FSH rise in a poor responder from the first, from the second day to the trigger was much smaller. Also, there's a very poor correlation between the number of eggs and FSH. There are very few studies which have looked at this unique concept. In normal responders, what it tells us is if you start increasing the dose, you do not make a significant difference in the number of oocytes that's come. Once again, what happens in poor responders? In poor responders, the poor response is not due to FSH. So it's a wrong concept to believe that if you give a high dose of FSH, then suddenly your FSH levels will go up and more follicles will come. And that's a very wrong concept. In poor responders, there is a problem with the follicles. Within the antral follicles, there seems to be decreased sensitivity to FSH. FSH stimulates follicular granulosa cells and the receptors. And in some cases, there is a general defect seen in poor responders. Trying to blame an FSH receptor is less likely and we, it's very much a theoretical concept. And what do we learn from the study? We also learned that if you increase the dose of FSH during stimulation, which means you decide on day six or day seven, you decide, oh, I need to double the dose. She was on 150, let's make it 450. It does not reduce the cancellation rate. The cancellation rate continues to be the same. Do you increase a very high FSH level in poor responders by increasing the FSH? The answer is no again. Also, Remember, poor responders have inadequate antral follicles. And again, I, I keep telling the same thing again and again, is you cannot stimulate more follicles than what you see on a scan during stimulation. In a poor responder, the increasing the dose does not seem to change 
the outcome. The FSH levels do not rise. The FSH exposure tends to be very much the same. And it doesn't seem to work. Now, let's look at the physiology. Now, when does the maximum concentration of recombinant FSH come after repeated administration? It's reached between 7.3 to 10 hours. So once you start giving a repeated FSH, you start getting a reasonable amount of FSH levels. The half-life of FSH after repeated, I'm not saying single, after repeated stimulation is 24 to 48 hours. So sometimes when you completely stop giving FSH, the follicles continue to grow, even when they are small. The FSH level reaches a steady pattern after 72 hours, and after, sorry, after 24 hours, and after, it creates a window. In that window, once you've reached that steady level, Increasing the dose of FSH just does not matter because the rise does not exceed more than one international unit per liter. It's almost impossible to be able to move once you reach a steady level. And that is the most important biochemical thing that we learn from here. That if you decide to, once you reach that certain amount of uh, FSH, steady FSH, after which... FSH levels in blood do not rise. Again, what happens if you start antagonist on day six? Theoretically, when you start an antagonist later, endogenous FSH can wait. And sometimes I use that in a poor responder. But what it told us in normal responders and in PCO is that it did not matter whether you started antagonist day two or day six, the number of oocytes tend to be the same. What you take back from this is that in, if you in, do not in, increase the dose in a poor responder midway or putting them in a very high dose does not seem to work. And if any of you all come for the course, we will be talking on chasing the antral follicle. This is a new concept. It seems to work. For hyper responders, it also tells us lower the dose. This is a very unique paper. And I think... I want to change the way a lot of us think. IVF generally is simple, but I want you to start thinking of how ovaries start responding, how they work up their way under the influence of FSH, and why some follicles don't grow, why some follicles are empty. There are many questions, and that is the fascinating part of reproductive medicine, is that often many of us do not ask questions Physiology answers those questions. Anyway, thank you for listening. Bye.